flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Notts County, second season in the Premier League. As always, if you're enjoying the safe, drop a like, that would be tremendous. We did it. We managed to stay up, um, I would say against the odds, but actually in a way, yeah, I still think we did stay up against the odds because our team, as is constantly pointed out, was not good enough. But at the end of the day, it obviously was because we stayed up. Um, I know what you mean, though, uh, in terms of player quality, which is why sometimes you just have to find that extra 5% quality through tactics. And I know I tinker a lot, but sometimes that's all you can really do with things when it seems to just be consistently uh, not going the way you want it to, essentially. But um, essentially, I've, I've thrown in the towel on the beta. Uh, I'm back to the original version of the game, the current normal release, because I think the beta one was just too inconsistent for me. Uh, you couldn't really plan anything because stuff just constantly kept changing. There was no consistencies, and that's, I think, what was the biggest problem for me. So I've just gone back to something that's a bit more stable for now, even if it has some other problems with which, at the end of the day, we were fine before. We'll be fine again once there's a... Well, this will eventually become... Uh, the beta will eventually become the full version at some point anyway, once it's got a few more tweaks to it. So at that point, we'll be fine, probably. And hopefully we'll be all right at that point. So yes, we are back on the original version of the game, no longer on the public beta. Probably should have done it long ago, but I didn't want to do it in the middle of the season, just because, you know, I thought if I was going to do it, it needs to be in the off-season. Now, uh, those of you that watch the analysis video will, of course, know about our transfer budget and, of course, something with the stadium. But for some reason, the board waited a few days until after the end of the season to tell me this stuff. So firstly, transfer funds, in the end, we had 44 million pounds and a transfer budget uh, sorry wage budget of around about 700k although i've moved a little bit around a bit uh, you can see that we've still got 17 million left but also the board have announced plans to build a new stadium nothing more than that just plans i don't really know what that means but we're getting a new stadium which is bloody fantastic so Notts County fans, let me know, if you were to build a new stadium, what would you have it be named? Like a proper, historical, awesome name if you had any... Or anyone's got an idea, of course. But if you are a county fan, that would be excellent because you'll know the history and stuff. So if you were to build a new stadium, let me know what you'd be like it to be called because obviously we can do the old stadium name change thing uh, unless it doesn't work anymore. Uh, so yeah, when they eventually do build it at some point because it will be during the save. So I made a, I'm excited to show you what's happened in the summer because I think I might have made the bargain signing of the century. Probably the most bargain signing I think I might have ever made on FM. Uh, genuinely, that's what I believe leave it certainly up there and another quite exciting signing in fact there's been a lot of good signings i've got to say some that haven't quite lived up to expectations though but i think it's a kind of a bit of both this year i don't think we'll be in quite so much of a difficulty i want to be aiming more towards the 40 point mark this year seeing a little bit more out of our front men because i think we're starting to mold the team into something a little bit more sensible despite us going back to the old uh version of the game we are still going to be using the old the tactic we were using on the last match engine so let's get into signings but first outs because there's actually been some for money as well who knew honestly i'm just looking forward to a season where not, there's not so much frustration and anger, you know? I know it can be funny because that's often the comments I get, but I understand that it can sometimes be frustrating to watch at the same time. So we're going to try to keep things a bit more memeing uh, this year. Dara O'Shea has left to go to Luton for the season. Mamacon Oz has moved to Northampton Town in League One. Other players have left as well, but these are kind of the important noteworthy ones. Brandon Fleming has gone to League Two to show you kind of where his level is. Uh, they're Paying, I think, not all of his wages. I'm not sure, actually. £3,000 a week to go to Crawley Town there. Don't worry, we have got other players in that left-back spot now, so it's not such a big deal to lose old B-Flems. <laughs> Fran and Bleming over there. So, yeah, gone to Crawley. Lee Lee's gone out to Charlton for a season. He's got a goal and an assist already for Charlton. I was going to keep Scott Fuster for another season, but I decided that actually his best bet, since Wigan were interested, was to send him out for another season on loan in the Championship. So, yeah, I'm, I'm alright with that. Still only 20 years old. Tyrese Campbell has gone on loan to Fleetwood Town in League One. He's got a goal on his day before, which is nice for him. Niall McPhee has left the club. Um, Hearts came in with a bid. He joined us from Inverness. Uh, he's now moved to Hearts for £600,000. It's not huge money but it was some money they offered us some money and i was happy to try and just move him on because i just don't think he was ever going to cut it here and for six hundred thousand pounds i was all right with that but we have made one big sale and that is robbie burton has gone to burnley relegated burnley have bought robbie burton eight and a half million pounds they pay for us now again that's not as much as but remember me saying in the summer that i didn't feel like he was going to get any better than he was and i kind of wanted to sort of maybe cash in now since we had a lot of players waiting in the wings just to make sure and because of his squad status he wouldn't take being further down the team so i had to be very careful but he was actually happy to leave and negotiate with teams like that initially i had some really poor offers of like two million pounds but on the final day burnley came in with a massive bid of eight and a half million pounds and 
still wasn't his value, but I thought, you know what? That's probably a good deal for us. So eight and a half million pounds for Robbie Burton. First up, Mahmoud Tritar, a Tunisian lad who's coming, I think, for 30,000 uh, pounds from Efinia Sport. Uh, central midfield, don't worry, he's not the bargain of the century. Although he does seem to have decent potential and it's, you know, all right, argues with the officials, sure, there's a few issues, but first touch, passing, vision. Some of you will also remember me talking about a lad from Esbia. Now, this guy did not turn out to be the player I thought he was. 1.5 million pounds was the deal in the end. Uh, my scouts severely overestimated the quality of this guy. Now, I still don't think he's that bad. He has got some okay physical stats for an 18 year old. He is also six foot four. So there is that option. He's got okay crossing and he's very, very brave, but only nine marking, eight tackling. His passing's not too bad and he's got good teamwork and solid work rate. There's definitely a player here. I just don't think it's quite as good as I was hoping. Plus the potential was, yeah, that my scouts misjudged that massively. Oleg Kazakov, again, the, the Russian guy we signed last summer who has now finally joined us. Six foot one. So we do actually have a six foot one left back now. Crossing and dribbling are pretty piss poor to be honest but again he's still only 18 years old i think this guy's got a lot of room to improve to be fair and still okay tackling good teamwork good work rate uh good concentration decisions determination pretty high flair as well and pretty solid bravery on that one uh decent physical you know i think there's a i think he'll be able to win some headers at the back post if nothing else so but again my scouts misjudged him on the potential side of things. I mean, still, we only paid four million in total. Well, that was a signing we made last summer, but I don't think it's quite the best signing. Don't worry, there are some good ones to come. But again, it left me clawing at things in the fullback positions once again. Then we've got Thomas Stepanek. And this guy looks like a real talent. Now, I already showed you guys before this guy when we signed him up. Uh, snuck him out from the... Oh, he's a wonder kid too. That's a nice one. Um, from the noses of Manchester City. £10 million in total are uh, breaking the record transfer fee by us for comfortably. But this guy, for me, is exactly what I want from that side. Good dribbling, good crossing, good first touch, passing technique. His flair is good. Off the ball, work rate, great acceleration, pace. He's five foot ten, so he's not super short. He does cut inside from both wings. Then we've got Ernesto Cesano, uh, a left-sided player. I said I wanted a backup to uh, Guajardo, and we've got him. It's a Uruguayan who's coming from Racing de Montevideo. Now, not got the best dribbling, but he is a little bit taller, still got reasonably solid physicals. Great crossing of 16 as well. Very determined, decent flair, passing technique. The usual stuff I want from a winger on that side. He's not quite... And he's got a driven personality too. Um, decently length contract. I knew that he was this sort of level of potential when I brought him in. He was mainly just to pack out that side a little bit, particularly with losing Nile McPhee. He is, of course, being retrained to play further up the pitch, but I think he can make a reasonably solid understudy. The first of which is this guy. This is Issa Mpepo, who is a... I think he's from the Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes, he's from Dr. Congo. He's signed from TP Mazembe, 21-year-old. I like him because... He offers a lot of the same things as Costel Trofin, minus the dribbling, but he's got solid composure of 13, finishing is only 13, sure, but he's six foot two and actually has a reasonable amount of pace about him as well. Now, when I signed this guy, he actually came in with an injury and Trofin's had a groin, a uh, torn groin uh, muscle through a lot of the preseason. So we were actually facing the prospect of starting the season with no recognized striker because both uh, Mpepo and Trofin were injured. So I was a bit concerned, but luckily I went and signed a third one just so that we've got them as an option. He's a regular starter as well. So not the end of the world. I think there's something to like about this guy and his professional, tra I mean, he's a professional personality and for £600,000, I mean, that to me is the real, the real bargain here. 600k. And he's both foot, he has really strong on both feet, which is really, really interesting because I think that could make a huge difference for a striker. But I also said I signed one more striker. This is Gonzalo Moya, who's coming from Colo Colo over in Chile. Another six foot two striker. Um, got excellent balance though. Still reasonably quick, but not as quick as perhaps um, Mpepo. But that's fine. 16 finishing really nice. Uh, 11 composure, again, not great on the old dribble there, but good passing, good technique, a reasonable amount of flair and some solid attributes elsewhere. Does try killer balls sometimes, which is fine. He's an ambitious personality, but it's not the end of the world. And again, I paid two and a half million pounds for him because I was really struggling for a striker. And I was, I was very concerned that we weren't going to have a starting striker for the first day of the season. First time, it's time for a right back. It's Kim gui -hyong, another South Korean. So we've got two South Koreans in our back line. Now, he is only five foot ten. I grant you. I was torn between him and a guy from Stoke, but the guy from Stoke was a real player. Um, but that's not really why I cared. I have actually signed a real player in this summer too. You'll see him in a minute. It's the fact that he was twenty seven, would want more money, and had some other areas. He was a bit taller, but he had worse technical ability in terms of his attacking side of things. So I think he had like seven dribbling and like nine crossing. So I was like, Ugh. but he did have some other areas that I would have preferred. But this guy's a very, very fast player. He's got great marking and great tackling though, which is a nice thing. I think he's kind of got a Nico Williams vibe, but without the height. Uh, good decisions. I, I like him. I think there's something here for him. Uh, he's cost us 3.8 million pounds. He's already worth more than that, as you can see. The first of which is the first real player I've signed in a while. This is Sonja Hansen. He is a shadow striker. 
Um, I was torn between two again. There was a guy from Newcastle, another real guy, called Cardona or something his name was. Uh, maybe not Cardona. It was something like or Cardinia. Um, but again, it came down to the money situation. And we've paid five and a half million pounds from this guy for I from Ajax. 16 dribbling, 14 finishing, 17 first touch, 13 composure, only five foot nine. The Newcastle guy was a bit taller. That was the, the main reason. Uh, I'm getting him off of the comes deep to get ball because that conflicts with the shadow striker role. So I'm desperately trying to get off of that. Um, 13 passing, 16 technique. He's got good off the ball. His work rate's not amazing. Um, still only 23 years old. And I think for five and a half million pounds, this guy is a steal. This is Remy Dubois. He's joined us from Paris Saint-Germain, technically their second team. Now, I wasn't really intending on signing a central midfielder, but I did say in the analysis video, if I found a guy who could be an absolute star for us, then I would try and go and get him. Um, this wasn't really even a case of that. This one just fell into my lap. Now, he obviously, because of the way I've got the skin set up at the moment, I might turn it down one notch because at the moment it makes even really solid players look a bit average. There's a lot of 16s in him. Uh, got good first touch, 17 passing, 16 vision, 18 teamwork, 17 work rate, good technique. Not amazing flair, decent determination. He's six foot tall. He's reasonably fast. He's pretty agile as well for a six foot tall lad. Um, there's an awful lot of things I like about this guy. Like, I mean, he's really only poor in a few areas. Like, his leadership's bad, but who cares? Penalty taking and tackling. I wish his tackling was a tiny bit better, but that's okay. Corners are poor, but that's fine. 1.1 million pounds. That's why it's the bargain of the century. Um, he was transfer listed by PSG, and I can only assume my scout must have brought him in, like, the day after. A resolute personality as well. Because there was no other clubs interested in him, and I don't understand why. Um because I think he's brilliant. And we just swooped straight in immediately for £1.1 million to sign a guy of this quality. I was absolutely flabbergasted that PSG were willing to let him go. And there's one more signing where we've absolutely shattered our transfer record. And those of you that watched the um, analysis video will know exactly who this guy is. And here he is. It's Gael Perrier. He signed from Burnley. In total, the deal is going to cost us £40 million. Uh, 20 up front, 20 over the next three years. Now, again, that's miles, four times more than we've ever spent on a player. But when I saw this guy in the analysis video and his sheer number, like the stats he was putting up, sure, it was for Burnley, but he was putting up some big numbers of headers and key headers. Now, of course, they'd be on the defensive side of things, but he was still putting the numbers up and it was just colossal, some of the numbers he was putting out there. So 13 heading, 13 marking, 15 tackling, still only 20 years old, 18 acceleration, 15 pace. Like he is a very, very fast lad, but he's also six foot two. Um, he's got great positioning, solid-ish work rate, uh, some decent other areas. In it. His bravery isn't the best, but he's got great aggression. He's an excellent sort of uh, cover central defender, which is what I probably intend to try and play him as, perhaps, basically. Um, I think this guy is godlike and he's only on thirty-five thousand pounds a week it's not huge money compared to some of the players that we've got because he's a bit younger now i grant you that is a lot of money to be spending on a player like this but not when you consider how much they wanted when i put an initial bid in i tried it out um the first thing i did in the summer was literally once i knew what he was like i put a bid in 118 million pounds burnley wanted but then when it flipped over to the next season they were relegated i sent my scout out to sort of scout him i talked about him in the media to unsettle him and then i got news articles essentially about him pushing for a move all that kind of general stuff so i started undercutting with really low bids of like 15 million pounds and eventually burnley came in and offered me the player for i believe 48 million um is a lump sum and i then negotiated them down from there essentially to 20 up front 20 over three years so we're only paying 20 million this year and i genuinely think this guy could could be an excellent partner for Dong, um, particularly as he's a right-footed player and Dong can play on the left-hand side. So we've got a lot of solid defenders, not really an area I was looking to strengthen in, but when something like this falls into your lap, you kind of have to take it. So that is what we've done in terms of business. There's a couple more guys that I think aren't going to join us yet. Like I've signed another goalkeeper back up, but he's not going to join us till January. And in case you're wondering, Southampton were the other team that came up with uh, Watford. No, Watford, was it? I think it was Watford. And obviously Norwich, who got 114 points, which is a record. I checked. So Dong is doubtful with a groin strain, and Petkov is potentially going to be leaving. Obviously, this is not going to be the lineup that we're going to play. This is just from... Let's just do this. Uh, so in terms of who's fit at the moment, it's, it's a bit of a muchness here, because we've got Mpepo, who's not fully fit, Moya, who's not fully fit, and Troffin, who's not fully fit. I'm tempted to give Mpepo a start, just to see, because I like that height option for us. The rest of this, though, is kind of basically filling its own spot. Now, someone did point out to me the idea of potentially going back to box to box because it might give us a bit more defensive stability, and I'm tempted, to be honest, but I'm not opposed to the idea of playing a Metzala as well, particularly as that's how a lot of the AI teams seem to set up. Um, so, But look at this. There's a lot of green for the roles, which is very, very nice indeed. Now, um, I would probably... Yeah, Sam Hughes will start. Everything else, though, looking pretty nicely. This lineup definitely looks a lot better. You can see there's a lot more four stars in this lineup. So Mpepo, Guajardo, Hansen, Stepanek, um, Dubois, Ferguson, Luetti, Perrier, Hughes, um, 
Kim Gui Hyun, and of course, Paul in goal. Good man. We've certainly got a lot more options, for, that's for sure, at the moment. I'm going to put Drina on the bench instead of Akinola. Uh, so, on the bench, Hermanson, just in case, we need to change things up. Nico Williams, Regan Booty, Gonzalo Moya, Alan Drina, Ricky Griffiths, and of course, Cesano. We've definitely improved the squad over the summer. And as much as we're going to obviously lose today against Manchester United, at the very least, I think this should definitely be allowed allow us to actually play some football against a lot of the teams in the bottom half, I feel like, despite still having comfortably the lowest wage budget in the league, to give you an idea. Now, obviously, we're not expecting anything from today's game. I just want to see if there's any little openings that we might be able to create against them. I'm also unsure whether to play Dubois as a defensive deep line playmaker or a supporting one. I understand the difference is that he dribbles less and takes less risks, but that's to do with his passing. And the problem is he's... I guess Man United, it might not be the worst idea in the world to have him sit a bit deeper. These are the kind of instructions. I don't think this has changed at all. Let's have a crack. See what we're capable of. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to try. Forgot about that. Is to play Perrier as a cover player. Because we've got a standard defensive line, which means we're no, no offside traps. So he can jump in behind and cover up some... So if they do get in behind us, Perrier might well be able to do a job at actually preventing situations like that. Oh, Man United really do zip the ball around. Look at this. Like, I can't really argue. If they score a goal off the end of this, this is some really nice football from them. But we're just holding our line. Arta. De La Vega, La Toro, get your blocks in, lads. I think he's going to shoot. Luisinho. Oh. This is insane. The sheer length of time they've kept the ball from us here is mental. Gaspar. No, he's inside. Good save on Paul. That's a really, really amazing passage of play there from United, I have to say. Go on, get that block in. Gaspar. Luetti should be doing better there. He really should. Like, I understand he's not going to win an aerial battle, but he's got to be getting his body in front of that. Um, it's not been a good start to the match. This is actually very, very poor from us. I think it's just because it's Manchester United, of course. So we can't really take too much stock in that. But I think Luetti should be doing better here. He's got the... How is that not... Like, I understand that you're going to lose aerial battles to players when you're not the tallest, but I feel like that should be blocked. And how is he not winning that when... I don't know. It's just whatever. I might just turn the pressing down slightly. That's more like it. Dubois. Perrier tries the long ball and... Mm. Vignato. Oh dear. Um, well, they've immediately gone and grabbed themselves a second one. Literally from the kickoff, essentially. Hmm. But again, it's, it's really hard to know how much you can read into this based purely on... Uh, Perrier should be doing better there. Vignato, it's a great finish, but a one-on-one -on -one was scored. So that's nice to see, if anything, just so that you know it can happen. Maybe we should go a bit more conservative and try and play a DM for some of the bigger games, perhaps. That might be an idea for us, actually, to have that sort of DM system for some of the bigger teams away from home or at home and just to try and grind out some points from time to time. Luetti, can he pull it back for someone, perhaps? Finds the ball in and Guajardo and on! Oh, Hansen there with a chance. Really good bit of play. Luisinho and now Lautaro Martinez has broken the back line as well and he's missed. Mm. I'm going to drop the defensive line deeper because Man United are actually trying to fire balls in behind, which is rare against this type of system. And Pepo's ball in. Luan Senior. Ricardo. Arthur. Headed cl Could do without that, really. I mean, if it's all the same, we could do without that kind of shenanigans happening as well. Um, since they're clearly going to win the game very comfortably. Um, I don't believe this. It's actually gone in off his dick. I, I, I can't. <laughs> ah, you have to laugh. Stepanek, we've not seen really anything out of Stepanek. That's a bit more like it. He's finally found a bit of pace. And he's actually going all the way through. Great save from David De Gea. And, well, that's what I want to see from Stepanek. And Pepo. Don't know if he's been able to take anyone on here. Might be able to find Stepanek. He does, actually. Can he square up someone? Nope. He's just going to shoot from an insanely tight angle. Like, it's unmistakably a very poor first half performance. Um, we just weren't really at the races. We're forcing them to shoot from range a lot more in the second half because of that extra player in the right zone, which is fine by me. Um, ooh, straight through for Arturo Martinez. And it's hit the post. That was another good chance. Parrot. He's been quite quiet today, actually. Ah, that's a penalty, apparently. Um, sure, I guess. Vignato. And it's 4-0 to Manchester United from the penalty spot. It's Manchester United away from home. Uh, we weren't going to come here and expect to get anything from the game. And maybe we need to come up with a more defensive setup for the away games. Like a similar tactic to this with more defensive instructions, essentially. Um, I think that's something we definitely need to look at. Looks like it's going to be a 4-0 defeat. There we go. Manchester United 4, Notts County. We didn't really create anything. Uh, just wasn't really, yeah, 
on for us today. It doesn't concern me the same. If we'd lost 4-0 to West Ham at home or something, then I would be concerned. But at the end of the day, losing 4-0 to Manchester United, when you're in the level we're at, that's not really that much of a shock, to be honest. I think we lost 3-0 to them last time as well. So, yeah, we're trying stuff out. The penalty was a bit frustrating, but what can you do? Obviously, the one that came off of our, uh, their players' groin area, uh, not ideal, but they deserve the win comfortably and probably could have had more goals. So we definitely need to look at some stuff. And I think we need to adopt a more defensive strategy for big away games, perhaps, and just sort of be a bit more conservative about it. Not to count you, boss, I'm willing to experiment. It's the first game of the season. We've actually not got the worst start from here on out. Um, so I'm probably going to come back next episode and do Brighton at home and then Spurs away. So we'll have Leicester and Palace in the league off camera, uh, as well as a random EFL Cup game. But Leicester and Palace, like Leicester at home is a tough one. Palace away isn't that easy either, but I feel like it's a def we'll have more of a chance there than we would have done last season, for example. Uh, that's the way I'm looking at it, you know? And I want to start preparing something, perhaps for the Spurs away game, so we've got ourselves an alternate strategy. So anyway, if you're looking forward to the season, in spite of the 4-0 defeat to Manchester United, you can see some of the results we're getting. They were certainly a lot better than they used to be, particularly the Brighton one. That really stood out to me. Um, we were looking a lot more fluid for the most part. So if you enjoyed the episode, drop a like, that'd be tremendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, that'd be awesome as well. And as always, hold your gun, Capybara. I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>